So you, you, you have to think about where you're looking because where you're looking is where you're going. And a lot of people, they spend so much time looking back, which is why they never get anywhere. So years ago, I was speaking at a conference in uh, Los Angeles, Marina Del Rey. And I talked about being in a car. And when you're driving a car, I asked them to look at the windshield. It's ginormous. And then what's that little tiny thing called? Rear view mirror. And I said, the reason the rear view mirror is so small and the windshield is so big is because you're not supposed to spend a whole lot of time looking back. Now, can you imagine trying to drive a car only looking in the rear view mirror? You're, you're just gonna keep running into stuff. Bam, bam. Now you may wanna get to the promised land, but if you're driving only looking in the rear view mirror, it's not gonna happen. But what's human tendencies? We tend to have something happen. It could be an event. It could be a negative or toxic situation. It could be an encounter. And we have that one negative experience, but hum human tendencies is we relive it over and over and over again. It's like the very first time I had a heartbreak and I had never experienced a breakup before and I thought my entire world was coming to an end. And what did I do? I didn't acknowledge the lesson from the breakup. I'm marinated in my misery. So that's when you pull out the Luther Vandross and this woe is me. And I went and I want to talk to and tell any and everybody that I can because it's all about marinating in the misery and reliving that negative event, event over and over and over again. Because where I was looking was where I was going, which was backwards, nowhere. Because I kept thinking about the past, which completely immobilized me from moving into a better future. It meant that I had all of this toxic space that I had given to something that wasn't even in the present, it was in the past. But because I kept reliving it, it just means I'm just reliving my past in a loop over and over and over again, so there's no room for a new relationship. There's no room for a new opportunity of growth. There's no room for me to be open to receive something positive or uplifting or life-changing because I am stuck and holding on to the past. So where you're looking is going to determine where you're going. How many of you all, you, you got up today and you walked somewhere? Maybe you walked to the kitchen. Maybe you walked to the bathroom. Maybe you walked and got in your car and you drove somewhere. Well, which direction were you going? Forward or backward? Exactly. You're going back, uh, forward. So <laughs> think about it. When you're walking, you're, you're, you're looking where you're going and you're moving forward. You're moving toward something. Now, this is something that we all do every day. So why do we think that we are going to get growth and progress in our lives if we continuously replay and live in the past and we, we want better outcomes, we want change. It's, it's like the person who says, well, I want to have a much better and healthier lifestyle and I, I want to get in shape. But what they do is they keep, thank you, they keep looking at what, what they didn't do, what they don't have, how they look now. Um, they're looking at, at the, the, the pounds that are on their person instead of the person that's going to be without the pounds. Did you all get that? They're looking at the pounds on their person instead of looking at the person without the pounds. See, your, your vision and where you're going must be greater than your current circumstance. And again, watch this. Now, we do this all the time. How many of you all, you got excited in the last week or two because maybe you were going to go see a movie? I, I remember over the, this was probably like in the last two months when Top Gun Maverick came out. Uh, a lot of us were really hyped for that movie, okay? Because we were fans of the, the Top Gun that came out 30 years ago. And we were all curious about 
how they were going to make a sequel 30 years later. And I got a personal stake in it because one of my boys is in the movie. He's the uh, uh, the brother with the gray, gray mane and he's the admiral that's helping Maverick get back into good graces. So I'm I'm fired up about going to see this movie. I can't wait to go see it because in my estimation, Tom Cruise is one of the best movie stars of all time. Like he really puts everything he has into making a great quality product. So I respect his hustle. So I'm excited. So I, I wake up that day and I'm, I'm getting, getting ready to go, right? Getting in the car and I'm moving forward. I'm going toward a new experience with energy, excitement, and anticipation, you all. I'm fired up. My question to you is, are you fired up for your goals? Are you fired up for your new life, a new version of yourself? See, what I said was people are looking at the person and the pounds that they carry now instead of looking at the person who is releasing the pounds, how they're going to look moving forward. OK, so when you understand that your vision, where you're going has to be more compelling than your current circumstances, then you start moving in a different way. See, I was moving in a different way because I was excited about where I was going. I'm going to the movies. I'm going to have some fun. There's anticipation. You got a vision. I saw myself sitting in the theater with some popcorn, just taking it all in. Had no idea what was going to be in the movie, but I'm all fired up for it, right? See, a lot of times we, we have goals. We have things that we want to achieve. We have things that we want to, 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 to be successful at, and we don't spend enough time living in that vision because we're too inundated with our current circumstances and we are victims of our past, meaning we, we allow the past to be our torture instead of just being our teacher. We spend too much time marinating in our misery instead of really motivating in our mission. And when you motivate in your mission, it's because you know you're moving somewhere that's more dynamic than where you are currently. You know that whatever took place in the past, it's the past. It's done. It's over. Nothing you can do about it. How many of you all ever been in a relationship and you had some, some rough patches? How many of y'all ever been in a relationship, you had some events that were not pleasant? And at some point, you have to make a decision that you're going to move on. At some point, you got to make a decision that you're going to focus on healing. You're going to focus on being better with each other, to each other, better human beings and how you show up. You're going to focus on those outcomes. Otherwise, if you spend all your time just focusing on the past and you're not consciously getting better, and I understand it's a dance, right? You, you have to have two to tango. I know some of y'all in relationships and you only got one person that's willing to do the work. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about when you got two people that are committed to do the work. Well, I, I, I can't move forward and I can't move us forward if all I'm doing is living in the past. OK, so where you're looking is going to determine where you're going. Your behavior comes before your success. You're going to have to behave your way to success. You're going to have to behave your way to success. And then watch what happens. Heard a great story. Um, gentleman was preparing to take uh, the SATs. And he was not a good student at all. Had no business even thinking about taking the SATs because he was, he was really a poor student. Long story short, he ends up taking the SAT. And, you know, everybody's kind of expecting him not to get a high score. It's a, a SAT, I believe, is 800 in the, in the um, English and 800 in the math, okay? Uh, 800 comprehension, 800 math. So if you're getting a high, you know, high score, be 1,400 or higher. He gets a 1,480. He gets a 1,480 on his SAT. So he's fired up. He can't believe he got a 1,480. His mom is like, did you cheat? He was like, yo, I tried to cheat, but the way they have the, the, the coding, the, everybody's test is different. I couldn't cheat. And so he looked at himself completely differently. He saw something else in the mirror because of what took place on that SAT. He, he, he surprised himself. And from that day forward, he started showing up to all of his classes. He started studying every single day. 
He made sure all of his assignments were turned in on time. He was diligent and his GPA shot up. So he had the test score, but now the GPA was, was went up to match. Several months later, they discovered there was an error and there were approximately eight or nine students who were sent the wrong SAT score. He was one of them. He actually had scored something like a 780. <laughs> it's like, like it's 800, right? On one side, 800 on the other. He, he scored under 800, like again. <laughs> but by then it was too late. He had already taken on a new identity. He had already saw himself differently. His life changed forever because he decided to be different. See, this is the power of where you're looking. If you change where you're looking, you can change where you're going. And this young man had some exterior help. It was accidental. Some would call it divine providence, God's way of, of, of being uh, anonymous as coincidence, whatever you want to call it. He took full advantage of it. But we don't have to have uh, uh, an act of God in order to change. We can make that decision ourselves. So I want you to really focus on where you're going. See, when you look at any organization, when you look at any successful franchise, when you look at anything that is having long-term success, it's because it is constantly evolving. Listen, Tom Brady left the New England Patriots, and if you look at their track record, six Super Bowls in 18 years, well, guess what? There was never a year where they were the exact same organization. The organization kept changing and tweaking and evolving. There were some core pieces, but the majority of that was moving. It was growing. It was changing. It was evolving. Look at Apple computers. If all they did was promote the Mac, there would be no, um, what was it? What was it before the, um, before the iPhone? What was it called? iPod. Thank you. So it was the iPod, and then it was the iPhone, and then it was the iPhone slash computer. Then it was, you know, it just kept growing and evolving, and new people were brought in to execute on this greater vision, constantly changing. It's the same thing with your life. See, some of you are stuck on automatic pilot because I'm comfortable. I got a nice job. I know what I'm doing. I'm competent. And I'm just, they call it the Peter Principle. Peter Principle simply states that somebody does a position or a job for a certain period of time and they, they're really good at it. So they naturally will get promoted because they've been loyal and they've been consistent. But in actuality, they're not qualified for the promotion because they stop growing. And because they stop growing, they get promoted to a position that they're not even qualified for. Happens all the time in corporate America. Call it the Peter Principle. That's why you hear a lot of your, ask any of your friends. Ask anybody that you know that's working a job. Hey, are you working for someone that you feel is incompetent or not qualified for the position? You'll be shocked, or maybe you won't be, at the number of people that tell you yes. Okay, because people stop growing. They just live, watch this, they live the same year over and over again, 10, 20 years because they've fallen into the comfort zone. Your comfort zone is your broke zone. Your comfort zone is your no growth zone. Okay, so I want you to think about where you're looking. Think about what it is that you want. Give yourself permission to dream beyond your current circumstance. Give yourself permission to think about a higher, better version of you. Maybe you can get in better shape physically. Maybe you can expand your intellectual capacity. Maybe you could pick up a new skill, learn the guitar, take those piano lessons you've been talking about for the last eight years. Finish the freaking book that you've been talking to yourself about for the last 10 years. Write the damn book. Maybe you want to compete in a triathlon or Ironman or Ironwoman competition. Maybe you want to try a different career and you're willing to look in a new direction. Final story, then we're going to end it, up, end it here. A gentleman was very successful. Had a, a successful uh, auto mechanic shop. Grew it organically 25 years one of the most stable reliable mechanics in the in the neighborhood city of cleveland and when he hit 50 he realized that he actually went back because he never finished college so he always wanted to do that and when he went back to finish college he had to take some core 
requirements and one of them was bio biology, he took biology, he was like, yo, this is crazy. This is amazing. I, I didn't know about this. Fell in love with biology, decided he wanted to become a doctor. Man was 50. Married, kids, grandkids. Boom. Start looking in a new direction and where he was looking is where he started to go. And here we are approximately, I want to say nine, 10 years later, give or take. He is finishing up his residency right now today. He is a full practicing physician because he gave himself permission to reinvent himself, to recreate himself and to look in a new direction that was beyond his current circumstances. Was he already successful? Yes. Could he just stay where he was? Yes. But he gave himself permission and dared to dream something bigger, something greater for himself. I am challenging you to do the same. Where you look is going to determine where you go.